Hi there, welcome to Dr. Chan's Minor Ailments Forum. Uh, I've got a request to talk about allergy testing, so I thought I would spend a few minutes talking about it. This is a really short video. So I have a friend, she said to me, well, uh, my son is allergic to peanut, or, but it's not really tested, but every time when he eats something that contains peanuts, he would have a rash and he would have itchy skin. So uh, she's wondering whether it means that he's allergic to all nuts or it's only peanuts. So, um, so I thought I'll take this opportunity to talk about, you know, when to do allergy testing and, and what are we actually looking for. So in that scenario, I would say to her, uh, no, we don't know whether he or she is allergic to um, uh, peanuts only or to other nuts. The only way to find out is to do allergy testing of different nuts, including peanuts, to see if there's any uh, indication of allergies. Because in some a certain situations, some people might be allergic to peanut only, but other nuts are absolutely fine. And some are vice versa, as in not allergic to peanut, but allergic to different kind of nuts. So it's worth to find out, you know, uh, formally by uh, allergy testing. However, some people out there might say, well, you know, some sh health shop actually uh, offer allergy testing. Well, is it worth going to get it done? And my answer would be yes and no. Um, if you, I don't know how they actually do the test and what kind of thing they're looking for. But let's just say if you are going to have a random allergy test that you don't actually have an allergy, but you just want to know if you're allergic to anything. Then let's just say you go and test uh, 100 things that potentially can cause allergy. Well, you don't know how many of them is going to come back as positive, are real positive, because uh, our body is really funny and interesting. So let's just say if I'm allergic to this pen, so I've now touched the pen. Although I don't have any reaction to it, I don't have a rash, I'm not itchy, sometimes your brain will register that you might be allergic to it. So in the future, if let's just say if I'm having an allergy testing and pen would be one of them, then it might come back as positive. But it doesn't mean that I will have any reaction to it. So let's just say that same scenario when you have uh, if you have a test to test, let's say 50 to 100 different things that might cause an allergy. What if 50% of the things come back? Does it mean that you really would react to the whole 50% of the items? And if not, would that really kind of inhibit your life that you know, oh God, from now on I can't touch the pen now, or from now on I can't eat nuts now because I might be allergic to it, but I've always been all right before. So that can create a dilemma. So I would never say, no, don't go and have it done. In fact, if you want it done, you know, um, by all means do so. But it's important to know how to interpret the test and, and to decide what to do with the results. So uh, if you do worry about having any allergies, my advice would be write it down on a list, the potential thing that you think is causing the allergies. For example, let's just say I use a hair gel and it made me uh, having a rash and okay you want to find out what's in it that's causing a problem write it down you know I use that hair gel or I um, ate a particular kind of food in the supermarket it contains different ingredients worth writing down what is actually inside the product that causing the allergies so by doing a diary like that it's easier for a doctor to in interpret to decide what are we actually testing for as an allergies or allergens so I hope that this is useful for you and uh, by all means, you know, give me some advice on what you want to hear in our Minor Elements Forum so we can educate each other uh, further. Okay, so thank you for listening and take care for now.